In this session, we are going to look at some physical oceanographic data collected within a cold water coral reef from Norway. We are particularly looking at this paper here, Temperature Shocks and Ecological Implications at a Cold Water Coral Reef. Lead author was Damien Guillen. The data from this particular paper is available on a website called Pangea, which is an archiving system for earth and environmental sciences. So there's data, for example, from deep sea sediments through to oceanographic data, such as what we're working with now. This particular paper looks at a range of different parameters, mostly focusing upon temperature, to see how these vari variables have influenced the Cold World Coal. Here we can see some temperature profiles 2006, 2008, and we can see how temperature fluctuates on a seasonal basis, colder to warmer. There's also other data, for example from currents, including upward drifting ADCPs, as well as mounted bottom current meters. The data that we're going to download is actually a small component of that paper. So this is data from 2008, starting in April and ending in August. I'm just going to download it from Pangea, links have been provided in various places, and we're interested here in downloading data set as tab delimited text. If we just click that, we download this file. Okay, it's in a tab format. And at the moment, my computer doesn't recognize this as an Excel file. So I'm just going to open Excel, and I'm just going to import the data in. You see, when you go to open, no items match your search. That's because Excel is only looking for Excel files. So I'm just going to change it to all files. There's my tab file that I just downloaded. Select it and click OK. We'll have the text import widget because this is a tab delimited file as indicated on the Pangea website. So we're just going to leave this as delimited. We're going to click next. Tab has been selected in this data preview window down here. We can scroll down and we can see our data in neat columns there. The header file as well shows where we got the data from. Click next and finish. So our data is now in Excel. If I scroll down, these are, these are our data here. This is the header at the top, which contains the data description. So what we're going to do is just leave that file, but we're going to right click on the sheet, which is labeled TRRCM4 Fizz OCE Current, and we're going to go Move or Copy. And then we're going to select this box here, Create a Copy. Click OK. All we're doing here is just creating a copy so that we're not going to manipulate the source data. So we're going to keep that as it is, and we're going to work only in this file that we just created. And we're going to change the title of that sheet just by double clicking on the name to my data. Okay? Just so we've got the raw data, we've got my data. Right now, they're both the same, but very soon they're going to change. The first thing I'm going to do in my data is I'm just going to delete the header. Whilst it's useful for us right now, mostly interested in creating our data set that we can work with. By dragging across the top, by clicking on the letters, I'm just going to resize, getting my cursor to look like this with two arrows on it. I'm going to resize all of the columns. So I can see date time, water depth, direction. We've got current velocity in two components. We've got current velocity change to reflect singular bearing. We've got absolute current velocity, temperature, oxygen, oxygen saturation, and turbidity, the amount of sediments in the water column. Some, some of these columns we don't need. The first one is I'm going to get rid of water depth. I'm just going to right click on the column header, which is B, and click delete. We delete the entire column from my data set. 
I'm not interested in UC, VC, or VNW. I'm just going to delete all of those as well. And I'm not interested in O2 saturation. All I'm doing here is just making my data set a little bit smaller, which will allow me to manipulate it quicker. Now, we do have a slight issue here with our date time is not in a standard date time format as recognized by Excel. So we've got year, month, day, and we've got a T marker, 17 colon 58. We go to format cells by right clicking on the cell. We see that it comes under general. We want it to be coming under date time. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a new column, two new columns, and I'm going to select all of my values for date, okay? And I'm going to do that by pressing the control button on your keyboard, holding down shift, and then pressing the downwards key on your arrow keys. And it will automatically go all the way to the bottom of the data set. You can select it by hand, but it will take some time. As you can see, you have to keep waiting. So we've got thousands and thousands of rows of data. We don't want to do that. So just using by holding down control and using your arrow keys on your keyboard, you'll be able to very rapidly navigate through the data set. If you hold down shift, it will help you select. And I'm just going to make sure that I've selected all of the values in this particular column. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to use the text to column tool to split the date and the time into two columns. And I'm going to do that by going data, text to columns, delimited, next. And I'm going to change it to other and I'm going to put a T in here. And you see now in our little preview that we've got time and we've got date now in two blocks. Click finish. We go all the way back up to the top, holding down control. So I've got date, I've got time. And you see that date has now changed into a format with slashes. So we've now got something there that we can work with. Excel will recognize these as a date time object. I'm going to create a new column called date time in the empty column that we just created. I'm going to add the date to the time so that I can now create an object that's got date time on it. If I go near my cell and in the bottom corner you can see this green box and my cursor changes to a black X. If I double click it will copy all of my data all the way down to the very bottom of the file. So we've now got a date time object that Excel understands. It will allow us easily to find out what date particular events are happening on. And now we've cleaned up our data. We're now going to look at creating a table of values, mean, min, maximum, and so on, for velocity, which is V column E in my cleaned up data set. So just to calculate these various statistics, I'm just going to create a small summary table. So the first one is going to be minimum, next one's going to be maximum, mean, SD, short for standard deviation, and variance. And I'm now just going to populate these cells with various functions. And I'm going to use an equal sign. I'm going to type min. And minimum returns the smallest number in a set of values. And I'm going to just close that with an open bracket. I'm going to select my velocity. You see that now here we've got E2. And I'm just going to hold down control and shift and press down on my keyboard. And we'll go all the way down to the bottom. You see now that my calculation, which you can see over there at the top, it's now gone because we've scrolled all the way down through the data set. But you can see here that it's gone down to uh, E5322. I'm going to click in that box and I'm just going to close it with another bracket. I 
press enter. Go back to right before and the minimum value is zero. So there was a, an occurrence where there was no current speed in this data set. So I'm going to repeat this now for maximum mean, standard deviation and variance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it down. That's there, it's copied it. Double click, you see that my cell here also moved down. I'm going to move it back up. And I'm going to change min to max and press enter. So the maximum current velocity was 48 centimeters per second. Now I do it again, drag it down, copy it, move this back up, and then I'm going to change it to the mean. But there is no mean. Instead, we're going to have to use the function average, which of course is the same. So the average current speed is 18 centimeters per second. So we'll just go down again, double click, drag back up. And we're going to calculate a standard deviation, which is ST dev, standard deviation, which is 8 centimeters per second. And the final one will be variance. And the function name for that is VAR, V-A-R. Click enter, 71. And this here is current speed. You can, of course, repeat this now for every single one. Quite simply, drag it across. And you can change it to whichever particular value you are interested in. So that's an easy way of just calculating some descriptive statistics for your data set in Excel. But what about relationships? What do we want to do if we want to see if one value relates to another? Well, there's two ways of doing that. The first one is we're going to use a correlation just to see if there's any relationship between two variables. I'm just going to have a look at a correlation. I'm going to go correlation. I'm going to go temperature and I'm going to go velocity of V, current speed. So the function I'm going to use to calculate a correlation is equals C O R R E L, corral. Open bracket. Now you see it us for array one and array two here. So the first one we're going to add is going to be the values for V. So again, as before, select the first value, E2 cell, hold down control, hold down shift, and press down to the bottom. This time, instead of pressing enter or putting a closed bracket, we're going to put a comma in. So it moves our data set here in the function to array 2. Scroll all the way back up on the side. This time, we're going to add in temperature. So we're going to click F2 cell, hold down control, hold down shift, and we're going to press down to the bottom. Now we close bracket. So you can see here we've got our close function with the bracket, press enter. Go up to the top. You know, we've got a correlation value of 0 0.42. It's a quite strong correlation. So the next task that we're going to do is we're going to calculate a moving average. A moving average is an average of a number of values, usually those that have occurred in the past, or centered around a time point, so that we can see what patterns are occurring by smoothing out the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a line plot. So my Excel has stopped responding. Should come back in a second. And we can see why it's stopped responding because it's trying to draw all of the values in this particular plot, which is not what I want. So 
see if I can just change it just to run. Okay. So uh, if you have experienced this, it's because it's attempting to do too much. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm just going to create a selection of the column E. Just by clicking on the E button at the top. Insert and then chart just to focus it on that single data set. And you can see here that we've got current speed. It's really, really noisy. There's lots of variation. Our data is on records of every half hour across that four month period. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a moving average of about six hours or so and just see what the patterns are. So uh, could you give them that my data is every two hours, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. I'm going to go over to here. I mean, row 13, I'm going to go equal to average, open bracket. I'm going to select all of the values in the preceding six hours, close bracket, and press enter. I'm then just going to double click at the side and the little green square where my cursor changes, copy the values all the way down. So this is creating a moving average. For example, I just select this one, double click, you see I've got a moving average, which is following as I go down. So it's leaving out the first two values. This one, we leave out the first value. This one, we've got that value. So it's smoothing the data. And I'm going to add this now to my plot. You note that I select all of my data from the top. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. And click OK. And you see that my data is just slightly smoother. Okay, it's moved, smoothed out from the more variable data points. So if you increase the moving average in time, maybe do 12 hours instead, it be even smoother. And you start to pick out these larger trends which are acting on month or seasonal cycles. So that's calculating the moving average. It's a very useful tool in order to pull out the major underlying drivers of what's happening. So that concludes a brief foray into calculating descriptive statistics, correlation, and also plotting and producing a moving average. And those are basic skill sets that will increase what you can do with data and what you can understand it.